hello and welcome back to my channel so today we'll be looking into the 2025 software developers salary report and we'll be specifically looking into the one from offer zen what i like about them is that they are specifically focused on the software developers and uh, otherwise if you want to triangulate you can look into payscale uh, my broadband uh, it web so they also have some sort of a a report that they have for the IT personnel. Now, where there are quite a number of factors that affect the, the salary or that contributes to what a particular salary, and we're looking into uh, or looking at the roles, your seniority, uh, the industry that you work in, the company size, um, and also the location. So those are the factors that affect or that contributes to us a particular salary in South Africa. Now, uh, for those who do not know Offerzen, Offerzen is a recruitment company or agency that actually provides a platform for the companies that are registered with them and also for the, uh, the developers that are registered with them, they have a profile with them to actually communicate with each other in order for them to actually come up to a particular agreement so it is a wonderful platform and uh, i've i've used it uh, in the past and then uh, when it was relatively new they used to you know give us a, a five thousand rents reward for actually securing a job uh, using their platform and um, not only did they do that they also sent you a t-shirt uh, together with a champagne now let us look into let us speak about numbers uh dive straight into the numbers and uh, before i do that i just wanted to give uh, a shout out and big thanks to those who managed to subscribe and those who did not yet subscribe i encourage you to subscribe so you can get the latest content now let us strive uh, straight into the uh, report now uh, we'll start with the first one, which is the role. We have the backend, the frontend, and the full stack developer roles. So, and then it shows also the numbers for 2024 and 2025. So, for entry level, it it dropped. This is quite significant. There's a significant drop in terms of the the numbers there from going from twenty two thousand to nineteen thousand five hundred and seventy five. And I think this is mainly because of the I mean, personally, this is just my, my view personally. I think it's mainly because of the more uh, junior developers that are, you know, entering into the job market and also due to the rise in, you know, this code, coding boot camps and also university graduates together with those who are switching from their careers into the IT, IT space. So I think we know that this is, you know, uh, this high supply reduces the, the bargaining power for entry-level roles. Now, um that's what i think that's what i think is could be one of the common contributors and also maybe probably because companies are you know they might be cutting costs due to economic uh conditions the shift in terms of hiring is there you can see that there's a shift from uh you know they are focused much on the mid-level to seniors at this point in time so that could also be the one of the factors that contributes towards the the, the drop that we see there on the um, uh, back-end developer's salary for zero to two years. And then if we look at uh, two to four years, you can see that it's uh, uh, it, it also dropped from 36 to 35. This is a drop. And then also when we look into the four to six years, it's it's more or less the same. There isn't much difference. So uh, generally, there's, there's a slow growth in terms of salaries. And uh, this suggests that things are a little bit tough in 2025. But if you look at the 10 years plus, which is from 94 to 98,000 rands. So uh, these are gross salaries and not necessarily net salaries. And uh, yeah, I mean, we know that these are the averages. And as you know, that they have, they've sampled 3,400 developers. And, uh, you know, within that uh, 3,400, we know that it's, it's, it's a subset of a population, which is the population of developers. And, uh, I mean, so we, I can go with this one in terms of what they're giving us because we know that we deal with sampling when we're dealing with data analytics and data collection. So in terms of, that is in terms of the methodology. And then 
yeah, so they, those who are in academia, they will think of the quantitative and qualitative uh, methods, but no, they just ran a survey and only 3,400 developers were able to completely fill up that survey. So I, I, can, I can go with what uh, they are showing us here. But I mean, on the ground, we know that, yeah, it's, it's actually way above this for backend developers. And then we see that there's also the front-end developers, which is a, a, a jump there. So it moved from 17,000 to 21,000 for entry level uh, roles. And then, yeah, so I think that's, that's quite good. Uh, I think it's mainly because of the cost of living. And then also the, we've seen a, there's a drop in terms of the full stack developers, uh, moving from 21,000 rands or 21,428 and to 19,000. That's a, that's a drop. I think it's mainly because of the factors that I, I just mentioned. Uh, I don't think it's AI in particular at this point in time because it's not yet fully adopted by the companies. I think they're still in the stage whereby, um, you know, they are still assessing on how they can, uh, you know, comply with regulations in terms of the, its usage. Uh, but yeah, there are some companies who that have already started using uh, generative AI in terms of uh, allowing developers to uh, be a little bit more efficient. So in terms of the 10 years plus, we can see that um, you know, the backend developers still win, are still the winners. So in terms of location, Cape Town has uh, increased in terms of uh, entry level. They've moved from 24,000 to 28,000. This is a significant jump from 24,000 to 28,000. That's This is quite good. And in fact, it's actually way better than uh, Cape Town. I mean, rather uh, Johannesburg, because uh, back in the day, Cape Town was, was a little bit low in terms of salaries. Uh, but I think mainly because of the cost of living, Cape Town is a little bit more expensive than Johannesburg, having lived in both provinces. So I think this is this is very good. This is good news. But if you look at the the ones with ten years plus experience, you can see that uh, you know uh, they have went to hundred thousand for twenty 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 five. Cape Town is is doing very well there. And then in terms of the the company size, for somebody who um, is working for for a company that has two to ten employees, and earning about uh, sixteen thousand one hundred one hundred and forty four. That's I think that's quite good. Uh, that means it's a small company, but yet is able to give you this much salary. I think for somebody with no, no experience, it's, it's quite good. And then looking into the one for mid 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 sized mid sized company uh, with employees of about between five hundred to one thousand. An entry salary of twenty nine thousand rands. That's that's quite that's quite high. That's that's quite decent for somebody who doesn't know anything. And um, you know they're still going to learn. Let me not say for somebody who doesn't know anything, but for somebody who's still going to learn a lot of things with zero to two years of experience, I think that's quite decent. And we see that for big corporates, they're sticking with twenty five thousand one hundred sixty five uh, as for entry level. I, I think it's still quite decent uh, to be honest. Uh, looking into the industry, so we can see that the uh, fintech, the guys in the fintech industry, the, the financial sector, the, it's leading with a salary of about 38,000 for somebody with zero to two years of experience, 38,000 rents. That's, that's quite good. And it's leading uh, in terms of, the, com in terms of the, uh, the industry. And then followed, followed by, you know, the consulting, those ones in the, or let me rather say the, the ones in the cloud tech. So basically the AWS, the Azure, uh, you know, the Google Cloud, et cetera. So it's, it's, that's the second one. It's, it's the second most um, uh, industry that is paying, followed by the, by the uh, consulting. And then, and lastly, the web developers, uh, I think, <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, the yeah it it is it has went down there, uh, which with just uh, fifteen just over fifteen thousand rands, and then we looking at the programming language because I think it's one of the factors is programming language. Uh, Java has dropped. Uh, we see that Go, Go, and uh, Ruby are are leading in terms of the most uh, paying salary or programming languages. Then we move on to uh, the frameworks. So we see that Spring Boot and Spring Framework, these are Java frameworks. They are leading. Uh, if you look at the uh, the zero to two years of experience, they are leading. And also, if you look at the 10 plus of experience at 111,250, that's, that's quite significant. 
So uh, when we look at the frameworks, I think Java frameworks are still uh, number one. And then when we look at the, the cloud platforms, AWS, AWS certificates are still, um, you know, the number one uh, sets and um, with the guys uh, being paid around 30,000 rands. So that's, that's quite significant with significant with just zero to two years and you're earning 30,000 just by having the certificates. I think that's, that's quite good. So, um, yeah, overall, I would say that I wouldn't go to the benefits, uh, but I would say that overall, uh, this report is, is, is suggesting that things are a little bit tough. Uh, companies are actually uh, now focused on talent retention and also making sure that they retain what they have in instead of uh, acquiring more skills. So, meaning that uh, generally the economy is not doing well, uh, generally there's a stagnation, uh, generally, uh, things are not as as they used to be, because as a software developer, you used to, if you switch, you can get a salary difference of like ten thousand rands, or even more. So, uh, but things have now changed significantly, and you can bank benchmark yourself and uh, negotiate this the right salary. Now, thank you for watching, and um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, comment there if you need me to touch any other thing. And if you have um, some comments around the salaries, what do you think? Uh, is it is it good salaries or not? So otherwise, uh, happy coding.